Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie, and welcome back to another DraftKings UCL Soccer Slate Breakdown. It's been a while since my last one of these. I know I missed the last kind of round of games, but I'm happy that this is the slate that I'm coming back to. Second legs I always like a lot more than first legs, considering now we know what teams are really playing for and what the aggregate is. And, like, the teams really go for it now in second legs when they'll be a little more tentative in the first, although these games weren't. They were super high scoring. But I'm expecting the same here, considering there's no away goals or anything. Like, it's just a real slugfest now it's turned into for these UCL ties. All right, in terms of actual games, Barcelona PSG and Dortmund Adleti, both games are essentially 50-50s in my eyes. Like, I know there's, what, like a goal between, like, 3-2 on Barcelona and PSG and 2-1 to one with of Atleti leading at Dortmund. But I expect both, like every every team, just to kind of kind of go for. It. I know Atleti, like you see them sit back quite a bit, but when they attack, they attack with purpose. I think they had like what thirty percent possession in the first leg, and they still. I bet they had more combined points than the Dortmund people did, even taking away the goal. I think Griezmann had like what eighteen floor or something. I don't think it's that high, but he had quite a bit of floor, regardless of the low possession they had. In terms of projected lineups and set pieces for Dortmund, it should be a Brandt monopoly at this team. Dane Sancho is dealing with an illness and missed their last league game. But if he's in, he could take like a small smudge of set pieces. We saw him take like I think one corner even with Brandt still on. But I think that was a one-off more likely than not. So mostly Brandt, I predict, no matter what the lineup is, if he's in. If he's not, It'll be Sabitzer. If Sancho is in, he'd take over Sabitzer, but I doubt he starts considering he's been dealing with an illness. And for Atleti, probably a Griezmann monopoly. We could see Molina or DePaul take a share, but in these big games, Griezmann's kind of taken both the, or taking like the, he takes, he takes up more of a leadership role. I think that leads to him taking more set pieces because he kind of wants to be, wants to be the catalyst, wants to be the one to kind of create something. For Barcelona PSG, for Barca, Gundogan and Rafinha split. If there's no Rafinha, Gundogan monopoly, we saw Marcos Alonso and Ferran Torres take. In the last Barca league game, but I imagine those guys will not be sniffing the starting lineup now, considering that they only played because they're resting their starters for this game. For PSG, if it's this lineup, it should be mostly Dembele with a little bit of Vitinha. However, we could see an Asensio win, we could see a Lee Kang in, in, and they both have priority. But if it's this team, it makes Dembele in a really interesting spot. Also, Kimi, you'll see him take some free kicks, a couple of one-off set pieces, but mostly Dembele and a little bit of Vitinha otherwise, if it's this exact starting lineup. But remember, be careful of Lee Kang and be careful of Asensio. Those guys take when they're in. And Lee Kang takes over Asensio for somehow both in. In terms of prices, it's really interesting. The big name here is Rafinha. I know he was the highest goal scorer in the first leg games. However, it's disrespectful, I think, to put Mbappe and Griezmann that much lower. Like This is kind of the cheapest Mbappe has been the entire Champions League, which is wild to see. Like I, I see him as a big game player, even though he didn't necessarily show that in the first leg, but he scored a hat-trick in a World Cup final. Like This is a guy... Who is who lives for I think for these big moments and the UCL I think is kind of the big thing on his bucket list. Like I expect him to put the team on his back, and I'm I'm happy to go back to the well. I'm playing him cash for sure. I'm not, he's probably gonna be my most I own guy in GPP. Or if he's not, it'll be Griezmann. I, like these are gonna be my two forwards in cash, almost guaranteed. Griezmann, look at how many points he had against Dortmund. Like like let's uh, he had what eleven floor. That's really solid. He's the guy most likely to score or get a goal contribution in general on them. He goes the distance usually. Sometimes they'll sub early, but I can't see them doing it here when UCL's on the line. Like you, you'll, I, I think he'll go at least to 105 for sure, just like he did against Inter, and probably the distance. 
Usman Dembele, pretty expensive, but if he's in that projected lineup we saw and he has set pieces, I'm happy to go there. He would have had, like, what, 11 floor without taking last game against Barcelona. It's another revenge game. I love to play that narrative. So if there's no Lee Kang in, no Asensio, I, I really like Dembele here. Lewandowski, he's a tough roster in cash just because there's – some pretty decent floor forward options. But like he's been super solid. Like, he's kind of started to heat up in the UCL, but he's another guy who's just not going to get subbed right now. 8,400 is pretty cheap for a forward of his caliber. This is also the cheapest he's ever been in UCL, similar to Mbappe this season. So I could get behind a GPP. For cash, I just don't think it's worth the risk. Joe Felix, I doubt he plays. If he does, I'm afraid of him because of his minutes. Same with Rafinha. Like, that's what makes me think like Griezmann and Mbappe more. These UCL ties are so close, it's very likely that we see one or maybe even both games go to extra time. In that case, you want the guys who are going to stay on the field the longest. And that's Mbappe, that's Griezmann, that's not Rafinha. They have Joe Felix, they have Ferran Torres. They have guys who are going to come in for them almost for sure. Rafinha and Beats are 60, 70 minute players. Griezmann and Bappe, they're 90 to even 120. I think that's a big factor in the slate. And I think that's a big differential between kind of the premium options. We're all good. And Hel Correa, Dowdy plays. Whoever starts alongside Griezmann will most likely get subbed for the other. So that's what I worry about a little bit. Like whether it's Morato, that's. Perea, whoever it might be, one of them will get subbed for the other at some point, for sure. Lee Kang in. I really liked him last week. He got, like, 12 points is a solid showing. It was just not good enough considering how many goals there were. He kind of really needed a goal contribution from each mid and forward slot. And he's another guy. He's not a 90-minute player, which I'm really factoring in here, which makes me scared of him. I love my, my set-piece monopolies, but if there's a time to kind of get away from that a little bit in terms of prioritizing minutes, this is probably it. So he's not a lock or anything, but he's probably in play still. It's because of Monopoly, like I said. But I just worry a little bit about the minutes. Laminia Mall, same thing. Like He's probably going to get subs. He's been super solid for Barcelona in terms of floor, but I'd like to see him maybe just a little bit cheaper if I wanted to play, considering some of the top, top forward options here. Everyone else I'm not really thinking about, really. I could see, like, these Dortmund attackers are pretty cheap. I wouldn't play them in cash, but for GPP, they're definitely interesting. Like I said, I think these games are going to be shootouts again. It's going to be a lot of goals, in my opinion. And these Dortmund forwards are probably the cheapest way to get exposure to that, considering they're also... I think the biggest favorite, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with. I'm still kind of having it in my mind. These games are basically 50-50s. But if, if you're an odds fiend, Dortmund attackers are, are cheap for their odds, for sure. Uh, that the Adiani, Marco Royce, if he's in. Their issue with them, though, is the minutes, like I keep harping on about. Dortmund have a lot of attackers. Like, they rotate their whole, like, front four regularly. So really, you're, you just have to hope that they score before they're coming off. Over Murata, that's cheap. Volkrug, that's cheap. It could be a really interesting GPP slate because of these cheap attackers when everyone's going to be on the expensive ones. So for GPP, you can definitely get behind your Dortmund guys and your Murata and your guys who you know are going to get subbed. But if they score, like, and the other guys somehow bust in the time they have on the field... That's bad that you're chilling. Makoko is super cheap. I know, I think it was Halair. I think Halair is the one who came out injured last game. Yeah, ankle injuries out. So Makoko could play. I don't know if they hadn't projected. They didn't. But if he starts, that's pretty cheap for a for, for forward like that. that. Same with Bino Gittins. Like, those are super, super low price pieces that. I can get behind a GPP. 
Midfielders. If you're playing and oh, an Mbappe and a Griezmann, the next slot I think comes down to Brandt, Gundogan, Dembele, Lee Kang in. So the couple of scenarios I'm kind of thinking about right now is if there's no Lee Kang in, I probably go Dembele. If there's otherwise, I think I go Brandt, but I'm gonna look at the Dortmund bench and kind of make informed decision based on that. Dortmund have quite a few guys who are questionable right now, like Sancho, like Bino Gittins. If both those guys aren't in the team, I feel like that increases the likelihood of Brandt getting more minutes just because there's less guys to rotate in for him. So that's that. That's what would make me kind of want to play him. Otherwise, he's another guy who's going to get sub. He's another 70, 60-minute player usually. Which I kind of said is my whole strategy is avoiding that. In which case, if, in, in, if the, both those guys happen to have those doubts with them, Lee Kang in or Dortmund substitutes, then the one's a guy who is going to go 120 probably. They never really sub him. When they do sub him, it's just because they're protecting a lead like they were against PSG. I really like I really like Gundogan here. He's he's a ninety minute guy. He's always had super solid minutes. If Rafini gets subbed, that probably leads to a Gundogan monopoly, which you're playing for. And he plays super attacking when Frankie De Jong's in the team. Frankie De Jong sits. Gundogan starts to push a lot high up the field. If there's no Frankie De Jong, like Fermin Lopez or something, you should put Gundogan farther back which would make me less sure of him. But as like the pseudo 8-10 role, we really like Gundogan here. He's especially considering he's the cheapest between him, Dembele, and Brandt. However, Lee Kingen is cheaper. But like I said before, he's a guy who is going to get subbed for sure, which just scares me a little bit. In terms of strictly mids, Vitinha, I liked him. I had a little bit of shares to GBP. He was super low-owned. But he's been priced up a little bit here, not by a ton. So I could still get behind it, I think. Especially if there's no leak hanging in, he's more likely to have a share of set pieces. For GPP, go for it. Even for cash, I could see it, but I just don't know if you'll be able to afford that once you cram kind of the reliable midfielders with it, which is the issue. Like you probably need more of a bargain than that. Sabitzer, if there's no Brandt, I, I I might core Sabitzer if there's no Brandt and no Sancho. Uh, Sabitzer, Monopoly for 5K, I think that's really interesting. I, I, I could get behind that for sure. These PS, cheap PSG midfielders like a Solaire, like a Fabian Ruiz, I don't think are terrible. Fabian's kind of had super solid numbers, even as like a defensive midfielder. Like, he's in he, he champ to get a little bit of floor. So I get behind that. Same with Zaire Emery. Zaire Emery is super cheap. He was in projected, right? He, I think he ends up pretty attacking with this team. Ruiz will probably be the sitter, which allows Zaire Emery to kind of foray up the field a little bit. He hasn't had crazy numbers, but you need value here, and 3,900 really doesn't get much cheaper. Nemecha, he started just like in Brant's role last game. Terrible, got yanked at halftime. Probably not for me. Oschan, he's a guy who... Eh, last man in, I don't think it's that bad. I don't have a ton to say to him. He doesn't offer a ton fantasy points-wise. Ugarte, that is super cheap. 3K. Last man in, fine. Witzel, not really interested in. Starts at center back, usually. All right. In terms of defender, Akimi Cancelo, the other two premium options, both pretty solid. I think I'd prefer Hakimi over Cancelo. Just I know Cancelo's probably been the slightly hotter hand. I just think Hakimi is. I just see him in my head is a more point producing player, although although he hasn't necessarily shown that. Like, he just has – he takes, like, direct free kicks. Like, you get some shots out of those. There's a good chance of a goal, maybe. 
I think he crosses more, especially if Cancelo starts at left back. But they're both, but they're both interesting. I just don't know if I'll be able to afford that. So when I cram the expensive names I want, but if you go for a more kind of contrarian GPP build, maybe the Dortmund attackers, then you have a little bit more salary to work with. Maybe you can then pay up for one or even both of them. In that kind of scenario, I think that could maybe work pretty decently in GPP. For cash, I just don't think it's worth fading one of those big name attackers to fit. Although it could be an optimal way to do it. Molina, I'm I'm not as sure of him considering Dortmund are chasing right now. However, if Dortmund score like next game a 50-50, could see him maybe getting there. 4,600 isn't a terrible price. I just think for the extra 1,000, I'd rather play a Cancelo or Hakimi. Matt's at 4,700, though. I think I'd prefer him over Molina. He's not bad. Everyone else is kind of whatever. Ryerson I played last week. Almost got an assist off that brand head at the crossbar like the last kick of the game. I don't mind him. I don't mind the Dortmund fullbacks. I think Dortmund control possession again usually means that they get a decent amount of fantasy points considering they're having the ball, pushing the guys up the field. I get behind those guys. Kunde, not really my type of player, especially for that much. Marcos Alonso, if he somehow starts, I think that's pretty good. Might take a share of set pieces, cheap, cheap defender, pretty attacking fullback. Now, the interesting thing was, as Pilaqueta projected at left wing back, I'm playing him for 3,200 if that's the case. I really doubt that he ends up there. We've got Raquel May, Samuel Lino. Like, I'd just be so surprised if they started center back, usually as for the Quetta, right-footed at left wing back. But if he ends up starting there, 3 200, he's probably the best defender on the slate in terms of getting your money's worth for just 3,200. Just super solid. Right, Nildo, if he somehow starts left wing back, I know some websites had him there. I'd play that for sure. I like that a lot more than Aspi Quetta. He's naturally left footed. Probably more attacking. I hope I see that. Everyone else is kind of a punt. Look, the thing is here, I just see most of these defenders as a means to play the attackers I want. It's like a Jose Maria Jimenez, I will not hesitate to play that for 2,500 just to fit the attackers I want. Goalie, crapshoot as usual. Now, this is a 50 50 crapshoot. Both teams to score. It's super likely in both these games. So you're just hoping that your goalkeeper makes the most saves, and really any of these guys could. It just largely depends on who scores the first goal, I feel like. Like, if Atleti score first, Oblak is going to get peppered. Dortmund are going to be throwing everything at it. If uh, Dortmund score, scores first, game probably becomes a little bit more even. Same with the PSG Barcelona game. Like, any goalkeeper really in play, not a, not a ton of it. Here's some of my core, Griezmann, Mbappe. And I think objectively, I go Gundogan here. The probably doesn't have the highest ceiling of these guys, but he's the most likely to go the distance in terms of minutes. He has a certain share of set pieces for sure. And he's pretty cheap at 7700 Like, I'm happy playing those three guys. Then it becomes, do I go Brandt? Do I go Dembele? Do I go Lee Kang in? Um, there's definitely an argument to be made for any of those guys, but I'm starting here in cash, I think. All right. That's it, guys. Good luck. Hopefully see you back for the UCL preview tomorrow. And uh, hope everyone has fun. Peace.